Yeah, cut that bit out. <laughs> and action. <laughs> okay, so our topic is a distribution strategy. I'm Gavin. I'm Karina. I'm Jade. I'm Cole. I'm Eddie. I'm Derek. Okay, so my topic is Amazon, and you can't really talk about distribution strategy without bringing up Amazon, they're the kings of distribution right now. Um, so they're an online retailer, and they can, they've uh, stressed in their distribution strategy convenience for their consumers. So in this article by Wharton, the University of Pennsylvania, they talk about how Amazon's core product is their convenience. So for just $12.99 a month, a prime customer can have one to two day shipping. And Amazon does this by having fulfillment centers all over the country. Um, so yeah, in the fulfillment centers, like robots will move and get items in the warehouse and then they send them to uh, third parties like USPS, UPS, FedEx, and then they get that to the customers. Um, in some places in the cities, Amazon now offers two hour deliveries if you're close enough to the fulfillment centers. Um, and one day Amazon hopes to achieve 30 minute deliveries with the use of drones. So recently Amazon bought Whole Foods and they are moving into the food delivery market and in select cities, you can have two-hour location. You can have two-hour delivery from Whole Foods to your door through Amazon Prime Now. <clears throat> and this started in Manhattan in 2014. And yeah, so Cole's going to talk about farm to table. So. All right, farm to table. What exactly is it? Well, just kind of how it sounds. Whether it's in a restaurant or at your home. The food that you're eating comes straight from the farm. There's no like third-party middleman. Um, the, what I'm going to talk about though is how <coughs> restaurants implement this as a strategy. Um, basically, whether they own the farm or they buy from the farm, their the ingredients that they're using are sourced very locally. That's the only way you can get farm to table. They're fresher ingredients and things like that. Um, what makes up why would you want to do a farm table as a restaurant? It's higher perceived value from customers, which means you can charge higher prices. Uh, food is better quality. Uh, prices remain more steady because you have a very good relationship with your supplier, and he's not going to jack up prices because um, you have a good relationship. Uh, you have trust, confidence, and control in ingredients, and personal relationship. Um, but in the case of these two restaurants, Blend Time and Thousand Info, they bought the whole entire supply chain to regulate it more. So they own the farms that are supplying the restaurant with food. Um, and this is called vertical integration. Um, one of the restaurants, Blend Time, still keeps prices relatively low because they want to match the neighborhood. And in turn, their margins are very, very slim. Uh, Bell Campo's focus is a grass-fed beef. They own the entire supply chain from grazing, slaughter, butcher, wholesale, and, re and they have four restaurants that sell the beef that they raise. A uh, quote from the CEO, Anya Berlin of Bell Camp, <coughs> that prices drop dramatically for conventional beef, the floor drops out, but your costs don't change. Have the end, have the end market makes a big difference. So if supply and demand changes for beef and things like that, they can still keep their price the same because they're not influenced by the market. Uh, but to be able to make this model work, you have to have a very big initial investment. So to be able to own the whole entire supply chain, it costs them $50 million up front without even making any money from that. So is it viable if you have a lot of money? Yes. Um, I'm Katrina, talk about Costco. Um. Yes, yeah, so Costco's, one of Costco's most popular products is the rotisserie chicken, which is priced at $4.99. They want to promise to keep this rotisserie chicken at $4.99, and in order to do that, Costco did something kind of interesting. They 
they did their, they made their own chicken production manufacturing um, facility that processes two million chickens a week. Um, so this is something retailers haven't really done is become their own supplier. Um, yes, so this way they can cut down costs by bringing the production in-house. This way they can, they estimate, they estimated that they'll save about 35 cents a chicken. And as the headline points out, it becomes at a huge cost. It was a $450 million investment. So it's not something that a lot of companies can do, but it's also can afford that, but it will save money in the future. Next slide. As you can see here, that the demand of chickens has gone up with that prices have gone up as well. Other competitors have raised their prices, but Costco is determined to keep that price at $4.99. So they use supply chain management to their benefit to do that. And yeah, it's something that is experimental that other retailers would be looking at Costco as well. So now I'm gonna hand it off to Ben. So buying cars can be one of the most intimidating things for customers, not only because you have to go into a store and or dealership rather and talk to the salesperson. So what CEO Ernie Garcia decided with Carvana was to organize this whole Amazon for cars concept in which they have 15,000 cars in inventory. How it works is you go online and you actually pick, a, pick out a car you want. So it's like a 10 minute process instead of sitting in a dealership for who knows, four hours, it's a multi-hour process. With that, you remove the aspect of having to go into a salesperson and then try to barter for a better deal on a certain car. The concept behind it is uh, it's quick, efficient, and cheaper. Not only because you remove an entire section of retail, so your overhead is less, so you save an average of $1,600. Uh, uh, the whole concept behind a dealership hasn't changed for the past 70 years, so it's kind of nice to move into a futuristic Amazon concept. Um, they have eight different metro markets, including Austin, Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, Raleigh, Birmingham, and in Charlotte. They also have a, they're also breaking from tradition and they're including a seven day return policy which a lot of car dealerships don't do. And with that, it, it creates a certain relationship with the customer of the trust, and especially when you have a system that's just innovative and it's new, so you don't really know where it's going. With that, it gives the customer confidence that you're promoting the right thing. Um, and Jacob, some yeah. more? All right, so Starbucks's primary focus is to not just sell this coffee, right? It's to sell the Starbucks experience. Starbucks targets people in the range of 15 to 45, conveying its vision to its target market. They can convince customers to more for high quality products and new lifestyle. Starbucks is, uh, reaches its goals to establish and leverage its powerhouse premium brand through multiple strategies. First one is uh, rapid expansion of retail operations. Um, this includes metropolitan areas, shopping centers, inside other retailers, including Macy's and Target, and then the growing suburbs. And then the second uh, tactic is introduction of new products and store concepts. Back in 2007, Apple and Starbucks announced an exclusive partnership that allowed customers to wire wirelessly browse, search for, preview, buy, and download music from the iTunes Wi Fi music store at Starbucks. Introducing this new service boosted the music strategy and added to the overall enjoyable retail coffee experience for its customers. With investments of comfortable chairs, abstract art, widely played CD selection, friendly employees, and a wide selection of beverages and food items, Starbucks has pioneered a celebration of global and local community by creating a place of warmth which people feel they belong. They have rev revolutionized the coffee business and have rep represented themselves as the third place between work and home. And then Jerry's up next. So, uh, Tesla is also trying to shake up the car buying uh, business, but unlike Carvana, which is all about new car or used cars, uh, Tesla is all about new cars. So, for a new car dealership, um, I'm not sure if any of you have actually been to a new car dealership. Maybe you were there to buy a used car, or if you have bought a new car. Um, some of them are nice. Some salesmen actually care about their customers. Others, 
not so much. Uh, in the worst case, they can tow your car and then claim no responsibility. Um, so obviously, this model has been in, um, it's been around for like 70 years. And back when it was first invented, it was convenient. Uh, car manufacturers could just sell to dealers, which are really just a bunch of like in, uh, independent storefronts. And then the dealers would have to, would be the ones who worried about selling to the customer. But uh, in today's modern internet age, uh, that isn't necessary anymore. So next slide. Um, te what Tesla has done, as I'm sure you've all heard, is that they've got showrooms um, and all, all of the sales and everything that's actually done online. The showrooms have a computer and that's where people do all the paperwork and stuff. There's like, you, you don't deal with a, a dealer, you deal with a, uh, like a customer service representative who uh, guides you through the process of buying the car online. And then you take delivery at it at a service center or in, if you want, you can even just have it shipped straight to your house. Uh, even the showrooms are mildly unnecessary. Back in May, Tesla decided they were going to close most of their physical locations and go entirely online. And the legacy auto automakers uh, are seeing how, te how successful Tesla is with this uh, strategy and are trying to move to it themselves. Uh, Porsche launched an online car sales program, kinda. You still have to go to the dealership and sign out all the paperwork, which brings me to the problems of this uh, this model. Next slide, please. Um, car dealers <coughs> have lots of laws protect, uh, protecting them. Uh, Tesla has been fighting for basically as long as it's been selling the Model S to be able to directly sell the cars to consumers. And in places like Connecticut, they can't. Um, they can't even really take uh, take delivery in the state, I think. They have to drive out of state to take delivery and then drive it back into the state. Um, that uh, mostly online uh, strategy they were thinking of, uh, without all the showrooms, that also kind of backfired because of legacy costs and like leases that still went up. So um, you, you can change your retail strategy. You can change like from um, brick and mortar to online from uh, independent store to more of a chain focused um, uh, setting but it's it's going to come at a cost and it it might take some time for minds and laws to change to actually allow you to change your whole business model any questions <laughs>